let's consider the case of a swinging pendulum. So we have a pendulum. So we got some mass here. And, and let's say that the pendulum is initially at an angle of 41.5 degrees. And let's say the length of the pendulum is 25.0 centimeters. Now I let go of the pendulum and what's going to happen is it's going to swing down here to the bottom and then swing over here and then swing back. Well, you, you all have seen a pendulum before. Okay, so what I want to know is several things. First of all, I want to know how fast is it moving at the bottom down here. Okay, now I ask for how fast and you say, aha, I know how to do that. V equals V naught plus A T. Okay. No, cannot say that. Why can we not say that? Because that assumes A is constant. Well, is A constant? So if we look at the pendulum. Okay, free body diagram. We have we have tension pulling up at an angle like that. Okay, we got mg going down. We know that this component of mg is going to exactly balance the tension because it, we're assuming that it's done stretch. So that component right there, mg sine theta gives you ma. So a equals g sine theta. Okay, that sounds fantastic. Except theta changes. So if theta changes, A changes. That means that our equations from chapter 2 don't work. So we have to figure out some other way of doing it. Well, how do we do this sort of thing? Well, traditionally, we've got to find the force. From the force, we've got to get the acceleration. We've got to do an integral. We don't want to do integrals. We don't have to do integrals. So we say, is there another way of doing this? Okay. Uh, you know, yeah, y'all, y'all, uh, in calculus, you learn about taking, doing all these kind of integrals because this is not a nice integral. You know, so the integral of of a dt is going to be the v right here. Okay, but the problem is a is kind of complicated right here. We got to figure out, uh, uh, you know, the, re the relationship between theta and time and do a very complicated integral. So in calculus, you learn how to do integration by parts, integration by trig substitution, integration by all kind of other sort of, of methods. Okay, well, in here, we're going to use another method, integration by avoidance. Okay, it's a tough integral, so we're going to try to avoid doing it. Okay, so we say, well, how else can we do the problem? Well, gravity is the force acting on this. Okay, tension is only responding to the gravity. Okay, so gravity is the force that's making it move. Okay, gravity is a conservative force. So that means that we can say that the initial kinetic plus the initial potential equals the final kinetic plus the final potential. Okay, so the initial kinetic when we first let go is going to be zero. So that means that zero plus mgh where h is that height right there. I'm going to say, I, I, I'm going to make this easy on me. I'm going to say the height is zero at the bottom. Okay. This is going to equal the one half mv squared. Now I, I wanted to put zero at the bottom because that makes the final potential energy zero. Well, the m's cancel, so v is just square root 2gh. Once again, that same equation that we keep seeing over and over again. Now, all we have to do is find what is h. So we look at this and we say, okay, this is some length l, and this is some initial angle theta naught. Well, when it swings down to the bottom, this is length l. 
this length right in here is going to be L cosine theta. So H is going to be L minus L cosine theta. Or I just like to write it neatly, L times 1 minus cosine theta. So if I plug that into V, then the velocity is square root of 2 G L 1 minus cosine theta. Well, it's going to be theta naught, actually. That's the initial theta. So this is square root of 2 times 9.81 meter per second squared, 0.25 meters times 1 minus the cosine of 41.5 degrees. And so the velocity at the bottom comes out to be 1.11 meters per second. Now, next question. How far over here does it swing? Well, what's going to happen is it's going to swing, if, if we ignore air resistance, then air resistance takes energy out of the system and puts it someplace else. Okay, but if we ignore, ignore air resistance, it's going to swing over here and it's going to stop swinging when the kinetic energy goes to zero. So the initial kinetic plus the initial potential is going to equal the final kinetic plus the final potential. Okay, so the initial kinetic and the final are the same. So that means MGH naught has to equal MGH. Okay, so the final height has to equal the initial height. Well, the height is, well, given by L times 1 minus cosine theta. So that means it's the final height is going to be is going to be equal to the initial. The only way that works is if the final angle equals the initial angle. So that means it's going to swing over this way 41.5 degrees. And then the next question, when it swings back, how far is it going to go back the other way? 41.5 degrees. You can go back to the starting point. So up here, back to the starting point, back to the other place, back to the starting point. That's assuming no air resistance. The air resistance would take energy out, and, and with air resistance, it gradually wind down. Okay. Uh, um, one of the arguments of, that the conspiracy theorists say uh, about, well, we didn't really go to the moon, was you can see the flag waving. Well, the, the flag was waving in part because the astronauts were trying to shove the flag down into the ground. There was actually a little rod that held the flag out, and they were shoving the pole into the ground. It didn't want to go, and so the flag was sitting here waving, uh, 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 swinging back and forth as like a pendulum under that pole. And so once they stepped back from it and it was still swinging, you could actually prove that it was actually on the moon because there was no air, no air resistance. Okay. All right. So now the question is, the question is going to be, we've got the theta naught. Theta naught is going to be uh, uh 41.5 degrees. The length is still 25 centimeters. What I want to know is when it's over here at some final angle and when the angle is 20 degrees, I want to know how fast is it moving right there when it's at 20 degrees. So how do we do that? Well, we do it the same way. We say that that initial kinetic plus initial potential equals final kinetic plus uh, uh, final potential. Okay. And so the initial kinetic is zero, so this would be MGH naught equals one half MV squared plus MGH final. Okay. The M's cancel. Uh, uh, and so we do a little bit of algebra here, and we find that V is going to be the square root of 2G H naught minus H. Well, that's interesting. Same equation. You know, it's, it's, it's just the difference here in height is, is, is all that matters. 
So the initial height and the final height, the difference between those is all that matters. So the initial height was L times 1 minus cosine theta naught. The final height is L1 minus cosine theta, where the theta is 20 degrees. Okay, so if you plug those in, the velocity is the square root of 2g uh, times the h. So that's going to be uh, L uh, 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 times 1 minus cosine theta. Uh, minus the the uh, uh, the the uh, or one minus cosine theta not minus the original so that's minus one plus cosine uh, theta the final okay uh, so the ones cancel so v is square root of two g l cosine theta minus cosine theta not Okay, so square root of 2 times 9.81 meter per second squared times 0.25 meters times cosine 41.5 degrees minus cosine 20 degrees. And so the velocity is 0.967 meters per second. Okay. Exactly the same as before. Uh, all you have to do is remember it's the difference in height is what ma matters. So, uh, so this is another example problem here of using conservation of energy.